Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I have some historical romance recommendations for you but all of these romances have dukes in them. I love a good historical romance that has a duke. If you don't know what a duke is by the way because some people just don't know the historical romance terminology which is totally fine, I will educate you. So. A duke is a man who has like a very large title. So what I read about dukes, like the definition of them, um, in like British society, you have like the monarchs of the um, country. So like kings, queens, princesses, princes, and basically dukes are under the prince and princesses. Like they're, they're high titled men. And so in reality, there are not many dukes. Like there's not a hundreds of dukes where there are hundreds of romance books that have dukes in them. Like that is not a thing. I think there's like a handful of dukes that are known of in today's day and age. I don't recall. Um, but basically there's just, not everyone can be a duke. You can't just be a duke. So um, I just think it's funny how we have so many romances with dukes in them when there aren't a lot of dukes out there in the world. So take for that what you will. So I have quite a few historicals to recommend you today. I love so many of these, so let's get started. First, I have a whole series for you. This is the uh, League of Dukes series by Scarlett Scott. Scarlett Scott is an amazing indie romance author, by the way. I believe all of her books are on Kindle Unlimited, so you can check those out. But my Libby had all of these books in the library, so um, you can check your library for her books. Each book in this series is about a duke finding the love of his life, but these dukes were not born dukes, if that makes sense. So a lot of dukes inherit their title um, after birth. So like when their father dies, they get the title of duke, um, like a prince or princess would with a king or queen. I believe these dukes are part of this league, this group of people um, that were given duke titles because of their assistance to the British monarchy, the crown. Um, they're all like detectives and spies. Excuse the dog drinking water. <laughs> you can hear him. Anyway, so all these dukes were given their title. They all work for the special league in Britain, which is a league that is tasked to kind of take down this group of terrorists called the um, Fenians. They are people from Ireland who want freedom from Britain, but they don't go about it in the best way. They unalive a lot of people. There's bombings. There's like, it's not good. So they're trying to corral this group of terrorists to stop them. Each book in the series is about one of the Dukes finding the love of his life. Book number one is a second chance romance. It gives me, again, the magic vibes. The hero ends up being the heroine's bodyguard because her husband ended up getting killed by one of these Fenians. And so he's there to be her bodyguard and they have to confront the reason why they are not together anymore. Why they betrayed each other all those years ago. Book number two is Heartless Duke and the hero in this one ends up kidnapping the heroine um, because she was the villain of book one and she claims to be like working with the Senian group and so he's kidnapped her but then they fall in love. The hero in this one is one of the Dukes a part of that league but he ends up doing something not so great and so he has to now be on constant watch by another duke in the league um, and then he ends up falling for that duke's sister because they are in forced proximity and they end up falling for each other and he has this elaborate scheme that he put together where he's going to trick this woman into falling in love with him and she's gonna help him escape this home but they end up actually falling in love with each other they have this fake kidnapping situation where he kidnaps her fake kidnaps her she's all for it because they think they're gonna run off and get married when he finally spills the beans when the beans are finally spilled um she's not very happy that she married a man who was just out to use her but then they fall in love it resolves itself it's a romance book y'all shameless duke is about the brother from the previous one he didn't do some great things for the league in that book and so they've assigned him a partner for the first time his partner is our heroine in here named hazel who is from america and she's a part of like the detective league group in america and she's gonna be his partner and they don't get along whatsoever but they obviously fall in love book number five is scandalous duke and this one is a single dad romance and the heroine in here has been abused for many years by her brother who is a fenian one of those bad guys and she's trying to escape him so she makes this elaborate facade and new persona. She pretends to be this very popular um, French actress. Like she makes an accent up and everything. And the hero here has been tasked to woo this woman and to spill all of her secrets. Um, but things go a little bit haywire, obviously. The last book in the series is a uh, Fearless Duke. And our hero in here is one of those Dukes in the in the league. And he really needs like an assistant or like a typist. 
Um, but he ends up firing like three of them in like three days because they're just not, he's like so mean to them. He's not thinking they're doing a great job. So the heroine who's kind of like the typist boss, like she's the person assigned to like task the typist is so sick of this dude. <laughs> And so she's like, okay, fine. I'll go be his typist then. And so she becomes this Duke's like assistant typist. I love this whole series because I saw is so underhyped. So you have to check out these romances. If you want a cute little novella that is closed door, it's Christmas, but I thought it was so cute. This one is Charming the Runaway Duke by Maggie Dallin. So the heroine in here, Amelia, she's been waiting years for this guy to come and marry her. She's in an arranged marriage, but she doesn't know who her fiance is. Like, she knows his name, but she's never seen him. She has no idea what he looks like. And I think this guy, he's off at war and he decides to finally come back to England. And he's like, okay, I'm finally ready to marry this woman. She's been waiting years for him. And people think that uh, he is the runaway Duke, that he's running away from the heroine, Amelia. And so people kind of make fun of her because this guy has not come to claim his bride. When in actuality, he just was like, just doing off other things. And so he's finally decided to like, meet this woman but then um when he ends up meeting her for the first time um he ends up pretending he's like a valet which if you don't know what a valet is is kind of like the guy who is like a duke's like assistant kind of like personal butler a little bit um he helps dress him do scheduling stuff for him anyways so he pretends to be that and the heroine is really disappointed because <laughs> she ends up falling for like this valet and she's like what am i gonna do like this Duke is gonna come for me any day now to be to to marry me. Um, when in actuality she's falling for the guy himself. But he, the reason why he puts on this facade is because he wants to see if she can fall in love with him without knowing who he actually is. Um, so I didn't really care for the secret keeping part in here, but it makes the story go along, you know. Next, we're going to be going into Tessa Dare's books. Tessa Dare has a lot of romances that have dukes in them. So first we have the uh, One Dance with a Duke book which is first book in the stud club series this one isn't my favorite by tessa dare but i feel like other people love this one so maybe my tastes are different than yours this is about the duke of morgan who is one of the members of the stud club which is like a club for like dukes and high society men who own horses we have another amelia character i forgot okay so we have two amelia characters here um so amelia in here she finds out that her brother is in debt to this duke okay and by the way the duke of moreland i think his name is What's his name? Spencer. So Spencer, every night he goes to a ball, he ends up just dancing with only one woman and women are hoping that they choose her because they're hoping that uh, he'll pick someone to marry, you know? But no, he just dances with a woman and leaves. He's like, I finally danced with a woman, I can leave now. Um, and so the heroine here, Amelia, sees this as the perfect opportunity to talk to the Duke about absolving her brother's debt. And so she ends up pulling the Duke into a dance, which is very unheard of. Um, normally he asks the woman um, so she can talk to him about fixing her brother's debt. But then I think they get in a compromising situation and the two have to get married which happens a lot in duke romances but i'm not mad about it next is any duchess will do by tessa dare this one is a fan favorite our heroine here is a duke obviously <laughs> and his mother is really pestering him to get married she has gone to extreme lengths she's taken them to this small town called spindle cove this is one of the books in the spindle cove series but it can be read as a standalone so they walk into i think this pub or this shop of sorts and she tells him like hey you can pick any woman in this store, any woman. And um, we will take her back to England and I will train her to be your duchess. But you are going to pick out a bride today because I am sick of this. I have been waiting for years. I want grandchildren, come on. And so he picks out the woman he thinks will be the worst duchess ever. And so that just happens to be Pauline. Pauline is the barmaid <laughs> here. And he has uh, picked her because um, he thinks that he can convince her to be the worst duchess possible so he doesn't have to get married. He has a lot of trauma around women and marriage. So just be aware of that. He does tell Pauline, if you are not good at these tasks my mother tasks you with, if you're able to like make sure you're the worst duchess possible, I will pay you a large sum of money. Pauline is sold. She's like, this is perfect. I am not going to be a good duchess. So this is just perfect. And then I want that money so I can open my own bookstore in Spindle Cove. So things with Little Haywire, obviously they don't go according to plan when the two of them start falling for each other. And Pauline realizes that she actually does want this life. This one is so, so good. Like you need to read this one if you haven't yet. Next I have Romancing the Duke by Tessa Dare. There are even more Tessa Dares after this. So just be aware. <laughs> she just writes Dukes so good. She she has her little niche, okay? Um, so this one is, is very interesting. So our heroine in here, she ends up inheriting a castle. 
this property from like a long lost godfather of hers. And she's like, perfect. I have nowhere to live right now. Let's move to this castle. But when she gets to the castle, there's someone already living in it. And it's our hero. Um, he is a war veteran. He is blind. And he is very angry when this woman just shows up in his home. And she's like, what are you talking about? Like, I inherited this castle. And he's like, no, this is my home. What are you doing here? And so the two of them are trying to figure out who actually owns this castle. And there's a bunch of other things going on in here too. Uh, the heroine is the daughter to this very famous writer. And so she gets a lot of like um, attention from other people because they're like, oh my gosh, your dad did this, your dad did this. I love these stories. And the Duke's heart just like softens for our heroine in here because he's very gruff and grumpy, but man, he ends up falling for a heroine hardcore. Next, I have a whole series for you. So this is the Girl Meets Duke series by Tessa Dare. There's Duke in the title, okay, of the series. So um, these are three books. There's four that are gonna be out. Book four has been pushed to being released, I believe in 2024. Like I have been waiting for The Bride Bed, which is book four in this series. When is it gonna be released? I don't know. <laughs> I'm dying for its release. But these are the three that are currently out, so I will mention them. First in the series is the Duchess Deal. Oh, so good. Our heroine in here is a dressmaker and she is making this woman's wedding dress, but the wedding gets called off and the heroine is not getting paid for this dress. She's like, I worked so hard on it, the dress is finished. I should get paid for it whether or not they actually went through on the wedding. And so she decides to be as loud as possible to get this Duke to notice her so she can get her money back. So she puts on the wedding dress and marches herself into his office and is like, you need to pay for this now. <laughs> so the hero sees her in the sweating dress and is like, huh, maybe you can be my wife. <laughs> he really needs a wife so we can further on the Duke line, you know, like he needs an heir. But he has a lot of kind of like pent up trauma. Um, he was a war veteran and he came back from war heavily scarred. And that's the reason why his fiance canceled their marriage, which horrible. Um, so he thinks that no one could actually love him. So he's a lot of rules set in place on when they get married, what they can and cannot do. But the heroine has some rules herself, which he's kind of struggling with. When a good bantering romance, this is one you have to pick up. Book two is a governess romance. Our hero in here, I believe he gets the custody of his two nieces and he needs a governess for them. And oh my gosh, those girls are hilarious. I love them. If you want to read a book with like amazing kids in them, like these kids made me cackle. I loved them. So this is just a good, sweet historical that is a governess. I love governess romances. And then my favorite in the series is The Wallflower Wager. This one's about Penelope and I believe Gabriel is his name. Um, and Penelope lives in this giant mansion like alone, but her like her family owns it. And she has kind of like turned the home into like an animal sanctuary. Um, there's so many different kinds of animals in here. There's like goats, there's an otter, there's a lot of cats. So Gabriel ends up buying the estate next to hers and really wants to fix it up and sell it for a higher profit um, to other like high nobility people. But then he realizes who the neighbor is. And it's like, no one's gonna buy this house with all these animals next door. And so he's trying to convince Penelope to get rid of all these animals. She's like, fine, I'll get rid of them if you help me find homes for all of them. And so they go on a journey to do just that. This is an amazing grubby sunshine romance. So good. Next I have When Rogues Rush In by Tessie Dare and Christy Caldwell. Actually the, I say this bind up, but only uh, Christy Caldwell's book has a duke in it. Uh, Tessie Dare's does not. Um, so Christy Caldwell's little novella, a part of this bind up is called His Duchess for a Day. I believe Elizabeth in here is teaching at this girl's school. And for years she's been passing herself off as a widow. Is she actually a widow? No, um, but her husband betrayed her. And so she'd been trying to live independently. And the only way she can do that is by being a widow. But then one day when she's teaching class, who walks into the room but her husband? And people are shocked. It's a huge scandal. So the hero in here has come to claim his wife again. This one is so good. I did not expect to love this one as much as I did, but man, I really liked it. Next, I have the Duke I tempted. Our heroine in here has been hired to kind of decorate this ball. So the hero is the Duke in this situation, obviously. And his sister is putting together this ball and she hires our heroine here. What's her name? Poppy? Poppy. And she is a botanist. And so she works with flowers and plants. She has to decorate the whole ballroom with flowers and plants and stuff. The hero is the kind of grumpy gruff hero who, very, who puts a lot of people at a distance and he never wants to get married. He does not plan that whatsoever. He doesn't want to fall in love. He doesn't want to get married because he has some like secrets that he's keeping and he doesn't think it's fair to rope his future wife into that. So he's like, 
I just won't marry anyone. Um, but then they get in a compromising position, Poppy and him, and they have to get married and things go from there. This book is really good. I love the botanist aspect in here because it was so unique. Like you never get that in romance books or books in general. Um, and then the hero in here, he is very cold and closed off at first, but man, when his our heart opens up, it is beautiful. Next, I have like a novella bind up for Christmas historical romances. This is How the Dukes Stole Christmas by Tessa Dare, Sarah McLean, Sophie Jordan, and Joanna Shoup. These four romance authors are very prolific in the historical romance genre. Um, they're like four of the most popular names out there. And so each book in this bind up is about a duke falling in love during Christmas time. So I really enjoyed all of these. I don't want to go too deep into them because there are four to mention, but um, this is a great little historical to read during the Christmas time. And the last book that I have to mention is a all-time favorite of mine. This is My Darling Duke by Stacey Reed. Kitty Danvers is the older, oldest sister in her family. I believe she has two younger sisters. And back in society days, um, the younger siblings or the younger, the younger daughters were not able to get married until the eldest daughter was. So the heroine is kind of preventing her younger sisters from getting married. She's not trying to. She just doesn't ever see herself getting married or does, has not found the love of her life yet. So she's not married. And so she's trying to figure out a solution to get her sisters out of society because that is something that they want. And so she makes up this rumor that she's engaged to what's his name? The Duke of Thornton. Alexander is his name. She makes a rumor that she's engaged to him, even though no one has seen him in years. He is a recluse. No one has seen him in years. So she makes up this rumor that, yes, I'm engaged to him. So my sisters can go out into society. She wants her sisters to have the best life possible. She doesn't actually think Alexander will hear about it because no one's seen him in years, but it comes to his attention. He finds out and he's like, who would dare like do something like this? Like what the heck? So he goes to a ball one night after figuring all of this out and he goes to confront this woman. And when he does, she's so apologetic. She's like, I am so sorry. I will fix this. I was just trying to provide the best life possible for my sisters. Do whatever you want with me. Like it's, I apologize. And he's like, you know what? No, let's, let's keep this facade going. Cause I kind of am into you. <laughs> and so it's about the two of them falling for each other. Alexander in here is also a wheelchair user um, because he experienced a large injury. And so he is not able to walk. And there's also like one of the most iconic one bed scenes and like stuck in like a cabin scene. The two of them get stuck in a cabin alone and oh, uh, that is one of my favorite things I've ever read in a historical romance ever. This book is so wonderful. Stacey Breen is a fantastic historical romance author. Please pick this one up if you have not yet because it's one of my favorites. Anyways, there you have it. Those were some historical romance recommendations that have dukes in them. Let me know down below if you've read any of these or if you plan to and leave your recommendations in the comment section down below as well. But if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me the dancing girl emoji and like the red dress in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.